By the time Antonio arrived on his street in a rental car, he'd resigned himself to expect Cassidy's wrath. She had a temper and never hesitated to let him know when she was upset. Her personality tended toward the extremes, whether happiness or anger. Her mood seldom managed to land anywhere in the middle. Outgoing and bubbly, she lived her life how she wanted. He'd realized he was in love with her when he acknowledged that not only did he look forward to seeing her, but when he didn't, he'd be in a funk. Everyone loved Cassidy and indulged her whims. All she had to do was flash one of her pretty smiles, pout, or emit a cute laugh, and people would fall in line to do her bidding. He knew that all too well, because he was one of her enablers. He pulled into the driveway of their two-story Cape Cod home in a suburb north of Atlanta. Cassidy had fallen in love with the house, but thought it was too much. He had insisted they could afford it and should buy it if she wanted it. The day they moved in, they stood at the edge of the property line holding hands, and he listened to her say how she could imagine their kids learning to ride their bikes down the tree-lined street in front of the house. With its five bedrooms and six baths, it was a lot of house for two people, but they planned to have a big family, and the test scores in the school district had cinched their decision. He sat for a while in the three-car garage, contemplating what to do and what to say, but he came up empty. He rubbed a hand across his brow to stem the headache that had advanced the closer he got to home. Drama was the last thing he wanted to deal with tonight, but the only way to avoid a confrontation with Cassidy was to avoid going in. Get in the house, Antonio, he said to himself. With a resigned sigh, he went in and trudged upstairs to the master bedroom. The mild scent of gardenias infused the air from containers of potpourri placed around the room. The first thing he noticed was that Cassidy wasn't in bed as he'd expected. The king bed sat in the center of the wall, neatly made with a pile of different sized designer pillows against the tufted headboard, giving no indication a man lived there. He never could understand the purpose of all the pillows with their ruffles and flowers, but it was what she'd wanted. Candles of various sizes and colors ran along the top of the mantle of the fireplace in the sitting room off the bedroom. With a quick look, he saw she wasn't in there either. The second thing he noticed were the sheets and pillowcases neatly folded and stacked at the foot of the bed. Wondering why they were there, he frowned at the sight and shrugged out of his jacket. He was in the process of removing his tie when the bathroom door opened, and Cassidy stepped out. Upon seeing her, he paused with his hand on the knot of his tie. They looked at each other in silence for several long seconds, neither one of them offering a greeting. 